Hey family, and we're back, okay? I don't know if you see me as your aunt, your sister, your mother, your cousin. I don't know, but we're family. Yes, we over here at Deb Chanel's 4 Days World with the family affair and coming back at you with another video. But we're going to scoot on over to Candy Burris. Yes, the Illuminati queen out there trying to slide her way up to that ladder to nowhere. Quick, fast, in a hurry. All right, selling your soul is just not a good thing to do for fame and fortune. But it seems like she loves that atmosphere. But we're going to get on into it. Yes, we are. So if you have subscribed to the family fair over here, please do so. Share and like all videos. Okay, that's where we're going with it. That's where we are going with it because we're family. Over here, we come over here. We talk shit. We meet and greet each other. We talk about each other's day, how you were doing. Talk about people on the job. We talk about what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, and then we're going to get ready to do it all over again in the morning, okay? For those who have to go out there and work for others, as well as those who have to go out and work for themselves, okay? That's even a harder job. All right, when you're working for yourself, whoo, honey, you always be in promotion, you always be marketing yourself, and you always be talking, trying to sell your business, because that's what you do when you're starting it from ground up. Trust me, I know. Been there, done that, and moved on, okay? But we're going to get on... Um, Candy Burr's platform where I had to go over there because I like to see what she's going to say about previous episodes that ran on the Housewives of Atlanta and see her perspective and see if they mesh with mine or they just all the way don't went left, don't went south and you know I just don't know where she's coming from and then sometimes she do have some good leads on what she was talking about. I have yet to find as many uh, for the positive because like I said she's a fake fraudulent foolishness fuckery type of shitty woman when it comes to standing in her shit when it comes to her friends she don't know how to just say uh-uh no flag on play you know you shouldn't have did that girl what are you doing i mean i would like to see how tiny had got her together when they had that little show with escape i think it was vh1 was uh funding it for them and honey when can i mean when tiny got tired of candy acting a complete eye Y'all see her doing that one out thing. Okay, I'm just saying. Uh, those who see, see. Those who hear, hear. Okay. But going back to your yeah, Tiny, T.I.'s wife. You know, she was checking Candy left and right. I know she goes down for Candy because she pretty much had talked for Candy to get on this show, which is Real Housewives of Atlanta. Okay. So that's where the foundation begins. Can't they weren't checking for candy, like I said, and I'm always saying they were not checking for candy. They wanted Tamika, Tiny, Kodal, Harris. Okay, but she didn't want to get into it because uh, Ti said no. I think Ti was in jail at the time. He had that little weapons charged against him and all some other little things and it was supposed to have been uh ti and tiny going to jail but he just went on and said nah, i'll take the hit for my wife as well because she need to be out there with our kids now you know in a normal world with everyday people both of them joker would have went to jail been serving time she'd been over there in the women's correction and he sure would have been over there in the men's correction and the family would have been taking care of the kids okay but because who they are and how they are that's just it what it is child my daughter is skyping me what you doing? I'm taping. I'm trying to check before I go to sleep. Shawty, nine something. You used to go sleep at ten when you were living here. Now what you trying to say? You on your own and you're tired? Girl, get off my, my get off my screen. I'm taping. I'll call you back. You gonna say hey to the family? You gonna say hey to the family? See, I'll see her. Y'all, well, hell no. <laughs> I can't see you, girl. That's right, because I'm on the computer, I ain't live, but I'm telling you, you got to show me some tricks how we can get, call some of my family members on, on in the family affair and see how we can get a collage going where I can have them talk their foolishness along with me and everybody can see us just congregating, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know, the babies ain't going to talk to you, huh? Look, Elijah don't even want to look at you. Say something. Okay, so he ain't paying. He, he hear your voice and he's like wagging his tail. But I call you back so you can talk to him. Okay. <laughs> All right. Love you. Bye. Okay. So yeah. See, everybody. I was trying. My, my biological family tried to get a hold of me. I'm not. I understand what. Stop. I don't know how it goes with these children. I still call them children. She's 28, 29. We'll be 29 in March. 
I don't know how they feel like they want to go and do their own thing. When they hear they can't, they got to get out. You know what I'm saying? Everything, I, I got to go. I, I need my own space. I just, then when they get out on their own, they always call you. Like, oh, like a tick on my shoe. You know what I'm saying? Or, oh, just be like stuck like my panties to my ass. I'm like, girl, go, can you go away? <laughs> you with your man, you with your fiance. Go live life and be great. What the hell are you doing over here talking to me? But see, that's how my child has been lately, Lord. We moved her out last weekend, and she just seemed like she got to come over to the house unnecessarily. I'm like, then when you were here doing with your things and, and, and hanging out with your man, oh, you just had to have your own, you just had to have your own place. You couldn't stay with us. Nah, you couldn't wait until you just bought a house. Nah, you had to go out there and get your apartment. Now you're trying to look for a house. I mean, how backwards is that shit, okay? I didn't teach her that. She just called herself one to do that. Okay, but anyway, back to our... I would talk. You see how things get going? I have to bring my real family into my YouTube family. Oh, I tell you, it truly is a family affair over here. You just don't know what you're going to get when I come on the screen. You just don't know what you're going to get, fam. But I know y'all going to do the same shit, if not worse. But it just is what it is. Let's go back to talking about candy. Candy birds, yes. You know, she doing her little speak on it. Speak on it. That's what she does, okay? And she's giving us a rendition of what her perspectives were or what she felt she saw and heard on the previous Real Housewives of Atlanta, episode 12. I'm sorry, season 12, episode 15. Okay, let's go into some highlight points so we don't uh, spend too much time so I can get ready, go up downstairs and exercise. Yes, I'm trying to get my big ass up and ride my treadmill, okay? And I know I ain't going to ride it for five minutes. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. I ain't going to ride this treadmill for five minutes because that shit is motorized and it be pulling you, child. It be pulling you. And since I ain't exercising, God knows I don't know how long it's going to be five minutes and we're going to be Skyping and let my daughter talk to me and the dogs and that's how we gonna do it until i can build up the 15 until i can build up the 20 until i can build up the 30 okay and that's the, when i was in good shape and i was exercising every day that's as long as i ever went was 30 to 45 minutes but i was much younger than i was like in my uh middle early 30s and i was just whoo just working that thing out behind i'm 52 and i'm like uh-uh i be feeling my hips my bones ache <laughs> my knees popping child please i might to take me some tylenol and a warm bath when i finish walking on that damn treadmill Woo! okay i made a sidebar again i'm sorry family let's get on to what candy said okay and one of candy's little uh intake she said uh ken is not allowed to talk trash or foolishness around mall and so i'm like ken so what you trying to say girl you said she, oh you been around them and they all happy go lucky and oh they in love and this that and the third but they just don't show that on the show but now you're gonna come out Ken is shut down, all right? And I'm like, what man gonna call his wife Ken? You know, when you say Ken, I'm really thinking of a man. I'm looking for a man when you say Ken, you know. Could he call her the Kiki? Could he call her his Kimmy Bear? Kimmy? You know, Kimmy? Or, you know, like I said, Kiki, what the hell he coming with some Ken? I'm like, uh-uh, see, that's just too much right there. That's just too much. And it can be looked at as a way of you're saying, Candy, that she's being controlled uh, by Mike, I mean Mark, and that he could be being a little physical with him. What you trying to say, Candy? Are you trying to drop us hands, girl? Tell us the tea, honey. Tell us the tea since you want to tell Kenya's business on your platform, girl. And it ain't kosher, and it's looking kind of shady, I'm just saying. Then we move on to a scene where Kenya and y'all at the bowling alley, she trying to ask you what team name you want to have, what not. You're like, oh, ch hot chocolate, hot chocolate. Now, Maybe it's just me, but when I hear that, I think about Phaedra and her uh, re reference to something when Phaedra was on the show. And she used to call herself fooling around with uh, Giselle Bryant's real husband, uh, Pastor Bryant. He's over at New Birth uh, Missionary Church here over in Atlanta. And it's like you were trying to make digs at that hot chocolate. You know, Mr. Chocolate. You know, all that. Like, Candy, you just as fake and fraudulent and full of fuckery. Ooh, girl. Ooh, you get on my nerve when you be sitting out. You don't want people to talk about you. And you don't want nobody talking about your kids. But you always want to come over here and talk about, you know, somebody. And I saw a video you did, too, where you put your phone number out there. And you text people here and there, this, that, and the third. And you go and parade and put your kids on social media. And then with somebody out the pocket, you know, which they ain't had no business doing. Because I'm going to tell you, Ace is one handsome looking guy. 
And and Riley is beautiful. Kayla is beautiful. She's not your daughter in real life. She's your stepdaughter, whatever. You treat her like shit, but she's gorgeous. And then you got baby Blaze. She looking just like Todd. You know, and Todd is a handsome man. Yes, he is. But my whole thing is, you can't put your kids out there and don't think people ain't going to judge them just as harshly and cruelly as they judge you. Okay, and you ain't no uh, ugly woman yourself. So with the whole deal, when you coming, sitting up there trying to put somebody on the spotlight, when you damn put your kids out there in the first place, and that was just piss poor parenting on your part, Candy. I'm just saying, keep your kids out of social media. But you got all of them got all their accounts, and you got them all plastered out there. So when you put shit out there like that, you gonna take the bad and the good together. And it just depends on your kids as they grow up whether or not they're going to be a part of this social media world because you ain't making it good. So you just putting them for attack when you have things out there for people to partake of in a positive way and a negative way. So I fought you for that, Candy. I fought you, I fought you, I fought you. So if anybody come up saying your kid's ugly and this, that, and the third or whatnot, then you're going to have to take the brunt. But don't get on that person that said the shit because they wouldn't have been able to say it if you wouldn't have put your kids out there. So I think you need to backtrack. I think you think you need to shut out a social medias down and, and, and get into some real commercials and shit uh, where they can be seen in a more positive light. See, you got that Baphomet sign up there. Girl, what you doing? Ah, but you know, like I said, you're going to do what you want to do. You keep doing you, girl. And I'm going to keep exposing you for what I see. All right? Don't claim to know the Lord and then you sitting up here doing Baphomet satanic worship shit. Okay, but I'm just saying, okay, let's get back. I, I tear it too long. Okay, I made it about you and it ain't about you. It's about what you're doing and your commentary and you wanted our advice on it so that's all i'm doing i'm giving you what you want i'm giving it what you wanted but anyway we go back to that situation where you call yourself nickname yourself hot chocolate now personally i think you played on some past stuff with phaedra and her being uh her man that she was in question fooling around when she was still messing with apollo was you know a uh, zell bryant's allegedly husband or ex-husband over there i think his name is jamal bryant but anyway that's what it was said. He was messing with him on the down low. You know what I'm saying? Uh, out of the uh, um, secret eyes of Apollo. Uh, but, yeah, it is what it is. So, I didn't like that. I didn't like you were throwing shade at Phaedra. Because Phaedra can't throw shade at you. You can't take this platform and throw shade on Phaedra. Okay? Unless you're going to... Uh, allow her to come back if you have any pull on that issue. But hell, I I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be let you I won't be letting you tell me what to do unless it, it was a legal or legality legality ah uh, legality type situation. That's the reason why Bravo Entertainment came bring Fraser back. Cause if you're behind one on the show, they probably would bring her back, honey. And she'll probably make them ratings for them because you, on the other hand, you kind of boring, can you ain't giving us nothing. You trying to tell everybody else business, but you ain't trying to tell your shit like your. Shit Shit don't stink. Cause everybody shit stink. My shit stink too. Not just the thing that I go to the bathroom and discard some stuff. I'm talking about sometimes I be funky with my attitude. I can say it. Yes, I can. Yeah. But I don't do it all the time and I don't do it directly at somebody. Just be a situation I'm going through and I just let have. Okay. Just how, you know, how I am. Okay. Family know how I am. But anyway, that's fake and fraudulent. The kind of shit you pull up there by throwing up hot chocolate. Okay. And then you sit there and you say something about uh, when y'all playing that kickball thing and you say, well, I want Cynthia because she know how to kick. And then they played this thing back on the boat where y'all had an outing and uh, Portia and Cynthia had got into it. And um, then Portia, you know, got that, get, you know, she good about them hands and shit. So she wanted to go attack, in a sense, allegedly, uh, Cynthia. And they got a little tussling here and there. And, and, and Cynthia had kicked her. Now, technically, Cynthia should have been off the show because she was, you know, you said she was defending herself and whatnot, but it, it is what it is. You shouldn't have been trying to kick nobody like that, too. You should have called, you should have called security, security, come get her and all that kind of stuff. Like, can you be doing this shit? But anyway, like I said, it, you know, it just, I guess it's just what it was. And y'all both still on the show and whatnot. But you still tell that Portia and Cynthia really still don't get along. They may be cordial here and there, but it's okay. But they ain't, they ain't about that life for us friends. But anyway, I, I ain't like that, can I said, uh-huh, uh-huh, you bringing up that kicking shit. Ooh, but like I said, you always bring up other people's shit in the past, but you don't want to bring up your other things. You're, nah, that's like a hush hush. That's like a taboo type thing. And honey, I feel sorry for you. I'm like, Ken, how can you be so slim and out of shape, girl? How can you be so slim and, and, and your figure like bam, bam, boo? 
almost like an hourglass, and then you can't move, girl. I don't know. Kenya was flawless out there. Kenya and Portia, they were taking everything in stride. Hell, old ass Marlo was out there doing that thing. I was proud of her. I said, damn, that's what I want to strive to be. I think Marlo's a little older than me, but damn, she was out there doing it on thing. You was sitting up there, the youngest little bug running out there, and you sitting up there uh, breathing, gasping for air. What the hell were you thinking, Candy? I don't know. I don't know, Ken. I, I, like I always say, you sitting there drinking your, your weight loss away and probably doing some life on and all that stuff. You weren't doing it the real way. And the advertisement of that tea and this shake shit, uh-uh. You got to get out there and do it the hard way. You can't suck everything out. You can't go under the knife. You got to get out there, eat right. You got to exercise. Now, I know what I'm talking about because I know I've done it before and I've gotten my weight under control. But for the last few years, honey, dealing with an 80-year-old woman, well, she was like 70 some years at the time. Ooh, it takes a lot out of you. And then I'm an emotional eater. I ain't gonna lie. When things ain't going right, you know, I don't get in depression. Oh, I don't feel I'm getting depression, but I damn sure eat some shit I'm supposed to be eating. A lot of fried foods, a lot of takeout, you know, just see what it is. But I'm getting back in tune with trying to do right. Only thing I can promise is I'm gonna try. And I'm gonna try if it ain't number five to ten minutes starting off, you know, for a couple of months. It's just, you know, it's a journey. Life it's a journey. Situations in life is a journey. And it's about winning at the end. It ain't saying who's the swiftest, fastest person. It's just you staying the course and you're doing it over a period of time. And you will hit your plateau of greatness uh, sooner than you think. Okay, but that's all I got to say. But moving back on into the story of giving our rendition of what? Candy and her speak on it. Uh, evaluation of our last or previous episode we seen on uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Then we have a scene where we have Porsche. <coughs> we have a scene where they're showing Portia bowling, and all of them are congregated together. And she wanted to know where was Marlo, where was Nene, where was Tanya Sams, and can you gonna say, "Oh, I didn't invite them." <laughs> Like, really? And uh, Portia just go on in and let half. She's like, what the hell you mean? We can't make no decisions about them. They are part of our crew. We can't sit here and say this, that, and the third without them here, being here and voting. And she's like, what, can, what are you talking about? Why did you do that? She was getting finna get ready to get in Kenya's ass, okay? And then I'm like, well, Candy, why you didn't do nothing? Why you didn't say nothing? You had nothing to say as usual. And I'm like, why you didn't check? As as why why uh, Portia was checking her, you should have came back when Portia got tired and she needed to take a breath or whatever. You should have been going in at Kenya too, making Kenya seem as low as she should have felt when she didn't invite Nene and the rest of the crew. I mean, what kind of mess is that? At least Nene invited her to her event that she was two and a half hours late for, but at least she did invite her. But Kenya didn't stay for several minutes, so it's like. Kenya, 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 and yet you still take up for her every possible chance you get. You always make an excuse for Kenya and her wrongdoings. Then we got Candy. Candy, um, do you or did you have really think Bravo wanted to listen and show all of Riley's PSA on obesity? Girl, this ain't a show about positivity. And uh, all enlightening folks about different social issues. <laughs> Girl, you thought you was up in Bravo's ass like that? For them to waste that valuable taping time on Riley's PSA? Girl, please. They say you better use your own platform and your own money to spread awareness if you want to. But it won't be on our channel. So I was I was there for it. Kind of like... Can that wasn't the time. That wasn't the time. You can't be using our Bravo money and, and, and advertisement because you want to show a PSA. No, use your money and get that word out, okay? Or work with the hospitals out there. Uh, or, or, or the human service area. They, I'm sure they'll help you do something, okay? But you're going to have to come out your pocket, too, if it's a word to cause and it's dear to your heart, like you say. Okay, because we didn't want to see it. We, we, we really didn't, you know? We're aware of it, and we fight for our own lives when it comes to this obesity type stuff. And, you know, we already know what to do. It's so much it's a plethora of information out there. It's just, do we have time? Do we want to invest the time in ourselves to do it? That's all it is, having a little self-control. But we didn't want to do it, Candy. So, why are you trying to shade Bravo? I don't think you need to be shading your uh, employer, honey. Mm -mm, back down, Candy. Back down. Then Candy's telling us to be positive with one another. Candy gets, uh, I'm like, girl, mm-mm. 
you contradicting yourself. You don't want positivity. You want mess. You want drama. That's what you thrive in. Okay? And then she's going to say that uh, Mark is kind of abrasive. He's a hard man. And he don't play that stuff. Especially when Kenny tries to mouth out at people or, or anything he's privy to. And I'm like, so what you trying to say, Ken? He's an abusive man? Girl, is he abusive? What are you trying to tell us? Because first you were trying to tell us that Bravo really didn't show him in a positive light. Because when they're with them, when they're hanging out with you at the old lady gang, uh, club or, or a restaurant over there when you have party night or couples night or whatever you got going on uh they they all lovely doubly but i'm like candy that's in your private space uh, they ain't paying for taping for that we want to see drama they want drama they don't want to see anybody even you and todd in a lovely moment because yeah couples have that time when they're being uh nice to each other and they're loving on each other but that that's not what people want to see baby that's not what people want to see so for you to try to throw us one scenario and then take us to another scenario that's salacious and stuff you, 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 the hypocrisy is just raining too much we don't want to uh, the, girl and then you're going to talk about, my, talk about pulling the reins can pulling the reins you were laughing about all this thing I'm like girl is you a friend or foe is you a friend or foe tell me now tell us because family want to know over him because you seem kind of shady you ain't a friend but I always said y'all ain't friends on this show y'all ain't friends on this show um then you have Nene, Portia, Cynthia, Eva, all of them having their sidebars about Kenya and Mark relationship. And they are talking good uh, and how he likes how Mark gets Kenya together and stuff like that. And you pretty much co-signing on what they saying. You know, then you said Mark doesn't call Kenya Kenya. He calls her Ken. Um, and I'm like, well, maybe because Kenya gives him nothing but negativity to look at when she's out and about. And he sees it. He don't approve of it. He's doing right. Shut her shit down. When she's not looking uh, classy, but she's looking trashy. Yeah, he don't want to be exposed with all that stuff. He want to have harmony and peace, even if he don't have it behind closed doors. He want to give that persona that he got Kenya in check. And Kenya will act like a lady in front of him and not like a foul mouth person. Okay? Ooh, child, look like you raising two kids, Brooklyn and Kenya. Uh, did y'all hear what I said? It's like he raising two kids, okay? Oh, hell, maybe he just see Kenya because I feel like it's a contractual agreement. There ain't no marriage there, all right? So maybe he just look at Kenya as one of his buddies. <laughs> Cause that's just how they seem. It's just how they see. He he loves on his baby Brooklyn, honey. Even though he's a sperm donor, that's what I think. But it just is what it is, okay, guys? It just is what it is. Oh, excuse me. And then Candace sitting up there talking about, if it were me, it was that. It was this. It was that. Uh, he would have to take a, a, a united front. Uh, if Kenya acts the way, if Kenya don't like somebody, Mark should not like somebody. This is how it should be. That's called a united front. I'm like, nah, uh, that's your united front, Kenya, uh, Kenya, because if Kenya is acting horrible, Mark doesn't supposed to endorse her horribleness. He's supposed to somewhat in private uh, get her together. You know, if we have to go to the bathroom together or they have to go around the corner and get her together saying, you know, I don't act like this and you're not going to act like this. You're not a child. You're a grown-ass woman. Get it together, okay? I'm going to walk out of here. I'm going to walk out of here. Why you acting a fool? I'm going to do what I got to do. Get me an Uber, a tax or whatever. I'm going home. Cause you ain't gonna act. No, we act a certain way in public. If you want to act that way and, and, you know, behind closed doors, because I just go in the other room and just leave your ass right there. Because I'm not about that like Kenya. I told you now. That's, you know, getting her together in front of people as well as outside of people or behind the scenes. But no, no, no man should endorse bad behavior that a woman is doing. And no woman should endorse her man having bad behavior uh, that's not acceptable. So, can you? I mean, can I don't know what the hell you coming with that. Okay, because Todd showed on. If you put him on the spot, girl, he, mm -mm, I've seen him. We've seen past clips, and we're going to see some future clips where Todd ain't accepting no shit from you. And you going off cussing at him, too. So, I'm like, girl, I thought y'all supposed to have this United Front going on. Don't seem like it's going to be a United Front if they show us what they've been teasing us as little clips. Okay? Todd.
car getting up in your ass, all right? But anyway, just see what it is. Uh, then Kenya takes up for Kenya not being invited, not inviting the correct people to where she should have invited the correct people when it came to the bowling function. She taking up for where, you know, well, I can see why she didn't invite Nene because Nene, you know, took digs at her. They don't like each other. I'm like, nah, Kenya, I mean, Kenya, you don't supposed to uh, endorse bad behavior. What Kenya did, it was a function that he was, she was co-hosting uh, with Mark, the bowling thing, for it to be a meet and greet for him to meet all her so-called friends on the show uh for them to come together so have a good time meet and greet with them and then he goes into his own little line of duty of what he wanted to express to them about his black man's lab charity okay he didn't really want to be messing with you women he really didn't but he know word of mouth women like to talk they'll spread it out to their women's and they're going to get back to their men and then they'll come together and have a very successful launch of a charity event for a needy a needy and worthy cause okay he really just wanted to be around the men because men ain't catty they just go and say what, what what can we do what do i need to do and all this stuff and women they go on another whole avenue talking about other women what they dress what they look like who they around you know just all unnecessary shit and this is how women are made up we do that we're very catty I would say some of us not all of us okay but the most part yeah that's pretty much our makeup and our claim to fame as women but uh because Mark, he, he, he didn't want to be fooling with no women. <laughs> he was like, where the men at? Where the men at? Okay, because I need to have some sanity. Women just, they talk too much. They get on my nerve. They don't look pretty and not be heard. You know, he wanted them kind of men. But, hey, it is what it is. Kenya knew what she was fooling with. She wasn't going to change them. Or maybe she thought she was going to change them. But Kenya, as usual, she trying to throw um, uh, Kenya uh, some kudos and, and saying well you know nene was mean, mean to her she should go on and get her uh back tanya was mean to kenya so yeah kenya can go on and get her back now that's this poor piss friendship that you're having with kenya and endorsing the bad behavior that's enabling candy that's what that's called in enabling more bad ha ha uh, more bad behavior to commence more bad behavior you're not a good friend to her because if you were you would shut her down just like mark does Okay, get involved with your friends and do it the right way, Candy. Don't let them go in and be all nasty and stuff and you giggling and gee -gee and kiki on the side. And then, uh, no, nah, it just don't work, Candy. It doesn't work that way. Okay, not in the real world. But, you know, the whole thing about you laughing about Mark getting down with Kenya and saying what she was saying about, oh, yeah, uh, I ain't never seen Kenya bag down or bow down to any female. But, honey, baby, when Mark strike and hit that wheel, Kenya doing all of it and asking how high she need to jump. I'm like, God, I said, can you, can you just shade the shit out of uh, Kenya? And I hope Kenya sees this footage because, baby, Kenya don't miss nothing. When she comes back, she going to be a savage on your ass okay we're gonna see how you assimilate through it all we're gonna see how you assimilate and navigate through those trenches of yes kenya moore getting into your ass okay but anyway we know you ain't gonna do that we know you ain't gonna do that can we know you ain't gonna do nothing okay and then you go in and say, well, no one's ever seen Mark go at the way he goes at Kenya. But you just said Mark doesn't take no mess of foolishness from Kenya. Like, damn, Kenya, which is it? You, are you not a credible source of the comings and goings of how the dailies get down and treat one another? I'm like, I'm thinking you're not, Kenya. You're not because you're talking out the side of your neck. You're saying this and then you're saying that. And they're not adding up, baby. They're not adding up. Then Candace says she knows some women who act bossy in charge in other environments, you know. But when it comes to their marriage and their husband being around, they get and go be submissive. Uh, and I'm like, girl, who are you talking about? Girl, because I'm like, you hang around Fantasia. And Fantasia don't take no shit from her man or men or whoever. Rashida don't take no mess from, uh, um, what's his name, Frost, Kirk Frost. Toy Wright don't take no mess. Um, Carmen, mm -mm, none of your single friends be taking no mess off men or whatever, however they get down. So you must be talking about T.I.'s wife, Tiny Cotel. You talking about Tiny Girl? I'm like, I hope she watching this speak on it because she going, if I was clue, uh, cluing in who you talking about, I'm sure she recognized herself too. I'm like, girl, can you going to have some folks shouting your ass out and it ain't going to be in the right way, girl. It ain't going to be in the right way. Then Candace shouts out Brent. Uh, Nini's uh, youngest son, 
because he was celebrating his birthday, I think, last week or whatnot. And she shows a little clip of him standing on a Jeep, I guess, um, what do you call it, Nene had bought for him and whatnot. And he was sitting on top of it, throwing up champagne bubbles in the air and shit. I don't know why he was doing that, but, you know, when you're giving everything, you don't have to appreciate nothing. So, it just is what it is. Cause I'm pretty sure if he bought that car, he wouldn't be on top of no roof of that car. All right? Mm. But it just is what it is. She's talking about, oh, we just watched Brett grow up on TV. And then she just thought it was shocking. I'm like, dang, we seeing the same shit with Riley. Ain't we seeing Riley grow up on TV again? What's so special about that? Okay? And I hope you paying your baby Riley for filming purposes. Because if you weren't, girl, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You better be cutting Riley some money from this show. Because you sure I'm making an ass out of her. Making her look bad here and there. Okay, can I'm just saying. Sitting up there telling her, uh, be, be more... It, I'm like, damn, are you trying to be a, a, a producer now, Ken? Because you trying to direct a whole PSA promotion thing on obesity and stuff of that nature. You telling her to get a little bit more pep in her step, be a little bit more excited. I'm like, girl, why don't you be a little bit more excited? What you giving us on this Real Housewives of Atlanta? Because you don't come off as perky. You you come out as tired, lazy, and through. Especially when you sit, sitting up there playing that uh, kickball thing. That's like my fat ass running out there. But you can see all the weight on me. You plush. And, and, and perfect with your shape. You should have some energy, damn it. Girl, let Kenya pop you out with that big ass ball. I'm like, girl, girl, girl. But anyway, this is what it is. Then we got Kenya still shading Kenya about Mark. Uh, she told Kenya more and Greg, and, you know, didn't get invited. And, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Mark said he didn't know nothing about it. And then you were laughing about it, about him getting in Kenya's ass, about why did you do this behind my back? I told you to invite everybody, not being selective of who you wanted to invite. And it just got hot and mess. I'm like, can you just shade this whole speak on it type platform? I don't know. I, I hope Kenya's looking at it. Because, who girl, you're going to be her next target to bring down. And then you bring up the fact that uh, Portia was getting on Kenya about how she had disrespected Tanya and this, that, and the third. Then you were trying to take up for Kenya that you felt that Portia should have been riding for Kenya since they were friends before Tanya came in the picture. I'm like, girl, don't don't lie like that. They ain't never been friends <laughs> ever since that dragon shit kicked. Uh, what's her name? Portia may be stupid on TV and look stupid on TV sometimes with some of her knowledge that she portrays of what she don't have on certain subjects. But Portia's all about them hands. If she could smell a fool trying to act, make her seem like a fool. Yes, she do. Honey, she can call a spade a spade and she be quickly to whoop on that ass if she have to. Okay? Don't let her fool you. She went to anger, anger management, but she didn't She she didn't excel. <laughs> she barely scraped by. All right? She barely scraped by. But she was doing the right thing. She saw what uh, was flawed and she brought it to her friend's attention or... I guess uh, some kind of uh, relationship her and Kenya have. And it wasn't right. And she just let her know, you know, that you got to come better than that. You got to come better than that, Ken. I'm just calling you out because that's what friends do. Okay? And Ken asked about how do you feel about Ken versus Kenya. Hell, I don't want to see Kenya. I, really, I like Ken better. <laughs> I want to see Ken every time that she's on this show. I want to see Ken show up. I don't give a fuck about Kenya. I don't care about Kenya, right? Kenya's too foul mouth. She's too loud. And she too abrasive. She want to get everybody straight. She wants you to humble down or humble down to her. Like she's looking at you. You a peasant. And she just want to blow you away. But if you do everything she say in the order she says do it. Like you know a puppet. Then you could stay in her good graces. So no. I, I like Ken better. I like Ken. Ken's a little bit more polished. She's a little bit more in tune with how things are supposed to go. She's less chaotic. I love it. I love it. I love it. Then Ken asks to Mark help Ken is back since she's wrong or she's a strong opinionated woman a woman i said hell no mark is doing his just do should he have said the tone nation could have been a little uh, better but he giving kenya what she give other people if you could dish it out you should be able to take it it's basically what he's saying to his uh so-called wife but no nobody nobody i don't care if it's your spouse your girlfriend your lover whatever should never condone their um uh, partners bad behavior they bad demeanor they bad character they trying to promote no 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 right is right wrong is wrong okay 
Uh, so there's no middle ground there. You call a spade a spade. I don't care what the situation, the environment, and what made it get to that certain level. No, you should never cross the lines of doing certain things that Kenya Moore has definitely done. So, yes, Mark is definitely headstrong. He's doing the right thing for Kenya. It's better to go on and chastise her now to her continue to go on to be like this and then his daughter grow up around all that and be talking foul mouth like a mama. Then it's going to be a situation, okay? I'm sure it's going to be a situation situation but anyway then candy feels like whether she's wrong or right Todd's supposed to or better have her back and i'm like okay you you keep thinking that way and then she's saying that's how she pretty much rolled when she was growing up and i'm like yeah and your your family members probably all of them got ass whoopings too because i'm telling you uh-uh hey, you go up there and you start some shit if you want to and then i'm looking at who you going against and who behind them and if they some ooh child look like they could do some detrimental damage to me <laughs> <laughs> I'm riding. <laughs> I'm saying, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna fall in fetal position and hope they don't kill me. And then I'm gonna get up and try to sue somebody. <laughs> but uh uh, no, my family, when I grew up, you can start some shit if you want to. Okay, they ain't gonna, they, now my family will, they like everything to be, everything to be fair. Now, if you started some shit, they're gonna say, okay, you go and handle your business, but we ain't gonna let nobody else come in, you know, like double team and you're jumping, you know, jumping the masses, jumping you, and it's just you. But now, nah, you start some shit like that, you're gonna go handle that shit. <laughs> <laughs> we, we ain't coming into nothing of that. Nah, mm -mm. only if somebody fought you or they came at you, that's when you fight. And then they come in and try to assess the situation. But you talking about one person be going jumping froggy and they ain't got no business to jump a froggy shit. Mm -mm. Now my family, uh-uh. Ain't -uh. nobody like to get in no fight. That's that hurt, honey. That hurt. Your muscles be aching. You got scratches everywhere. And then at the time when I was growing up, you got them people in a headlock or whatnot, a bear hood. They, they'll do anything to get her loose, and that means biting you. Child, uh-uh, no. Nah, so, no, nah, see, Candy, you were taught all the way wrong from the beginning. No, nah, you don't put your hand up to nobody unless you're trying to defend yourself. Now, that's the right way. Now, you going up here and trying to start shit because this person said something about your cousin, this, that girl. That's an ass whooping now. Mm -mm, my family wasn't liking no ass whooping. I wasn't even liking no ass whooping. I would talk myself out of ass whoopings. You see what I'm saying? And be ready to cuss my friends out. Like, what the hell you do that for? I ain't got, I ain't got time. Uh -uh, I wear glasses 24 7 My mama, mm -mm, Mm -hmm. She ain't got time to be sitting up and buying no glasses because I stood up there and tried to help you out. Fuck that, I'm gone. <laughs> I, I be gone. And I used to want to have a car when I was in high school, too. I said, shit, fuck that. I'm gone. You you got away home, honey. And you came with me. And I told your parents you're going to come back when you talk to, doing some shit like that. Mm -mm, I'm going to go to your house and tell your mom, you all better go up there and get your child. Because she acting froggy. And my mom told me not to get into no stuff like that. Uh-huh. They know I used to do that shit, honey. Mm -mm, nah. Mm -mm. No. No, 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 no. But that's all I had for this video. I know it was a little long. I know it was a little long. Y'all would probably take it in small doses or whatnot. But, honey, when Candy was saying some shit, I just had to get into it. I had to tell her what it was from my perspective. But thank you guys for being here. I will see y'all tomorrow with a couple of videos. We'll get down there and we'll do the same thing over again. But y'all get into those comments down there because it's your time to tell me what y'all thought about it, what y'all feel about it. Get y'all, speak y'all mind. Speak on it. Okay? Like Candy tell us. You know, when she wants us to speak. But it ain't her speak on platform. I'm just giving her what she asked for. Okay, my perspective on things that she was saying. She wanted my opinion, so I gave them to her. Okay? But anyway, y'all continue to like, share our videos. And I will see you next time. And we are going to continue to grow together. Yes, we are. Love you, kisses. Love you to the core. All right, I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye. Oh, no, I said it. See you later. See you later, alligators.